All right, so now we're looking at number four here. It's a table. So as usual, if um, I have any mistakes or corrections, I'll put in the description below or um, in a pinned comment. An ice sculpture melts in such a way that can be modeled as a cone that maintains a conical shape as it decreases in size. The radius of the base of the cone is given by the twice differentiable function r, which r of t is measured in centimeters and t is measured in days. The table above gives the selected values of r prime of t. Okay, um, so the radius of the base of the cone is given by r. r is measured in centimeters. Okay, rate r prime is given here. r prime is centimeters per day. So r of t is the radius, r prime is the rate of the change of the radius. Approximate r double prime of 8.5. So that's the derivative of this guy. 8.5 is uh, over the interval 7 to 10 using over the show the computation leader answer. Uh, so 8.5 is, um, you know, halfway between here and here, right? So I'm going to say r prime, r double prime of 8.5 is approximately equal to r of uh, 10 minus r of 7, r, oh, sorry, r prime over 10 minus 7 right because that's like a secant line slope so that would be negative 3.8 minus negative 4.4 wow really they make you do this without a calculator this is fine uh the top one is what 0 0.6 over 3 so that's 0 0.2 and let's put it in units it would be the derivative of this thing so it'd be centimeters per day squared because you're doing centimeters per day per days or per day, right? Uh, okay, is there a time for which r prime of t is equal to negative six? So I would look from zero to three here where it's negative six. So this is just looking at the y values of r prime. See, it's negative 6.1 and it's negative five. So I don't care about that. I'm just looking at intermediate value theorem there. I just know that it, 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 it must pass through negative six at some point. So we say yes. So let's say, let's let's start with this. So first of all, what's the conditions for an intermediate value theorem? So r prime of t is continuous because uh, r is twice differentiable. Which means that r prime is differentiable. Which means r is continuous or r prime is continuous. Because if r prime is differentiable, then r prime is continuous. Why is r prime differentiable? Because there's two derivatives, right? There's a second derivative. Okay, so r prime. And then we know r prime at zero is less than negative six. r prime at uh, three is, is greater than negative six. Therefore, by intermediate value theorem, there exists a c such that um, r prime of c is equal to negative six and c is between zero and three. So that's everything. You want to state the conditions, you want to state this, you want to say you invoke that theorem, and you, then you want to state the conclusion. So you use a right Riemann sum with four sub intervals indicated by the table to approximate the value here. So right Riemann sum, four sub intervals. Okay, so my intervals are three is the width, four is the width, three is the width, two is the width. And to do a right sum, I'm always going to pick the right sum. So it's going to be three times the right value of negative, negative 5, plus 4 times the right value of negative 4.4, plus 3 times the right value, which is negative 3.8, plus 2 times the right value, which is negative 3.5. So this is negative 15 minus 16, 17.6, minus 9, 11.4, minus 7. If I do the arithmetic wrong, I'm sorry. I'm just a little bit tired. 16 carry the 1, 6, that's right. 3, 24, 2, 9, 11. Yeah, I think I did that right. So this is uh, like these two I put together because they had the 0. 0.6 and the 0. 0.4. So that'd be minus 29. So minus 15, minus 29, minus 7. Whatever your favorite way to do arithmetic is. Minus 44, minus 51 centimeters. So that's what I would probably put. So that is a negative, yeah, and then the integral of the rate is going to be centimeters, because you can do centimeters per day times days, so that's centimeters. The height of the, oh, do they want to interpret? Nope, okay. The height of the cone decreases by a rate, so that dh dt is decreasing at a rate, so it's negative two centimeters per day, 
At time t equals three days, the radius is 100 centimeters and the height is 50 centimeters. Find the rate of change of the volume of the cone with respect to time. And they give you v is equal to one third pi r squared h. They want to find dv dt. And um, so here you actually, you know, like you actually know dr dt. You know dr dt because they're giving you in the table here. So you just you just need to take the derivative of this straight up as it is. So you get dv dt, so one third pi, and I got to do product rule for r squared and h. So it's going to be r squared dh dt plus 2r dr dt times h. So I did product rule there. And then uh, at time t equals 3 days, uh, what the, let's see, t equals 3 days. Uh, oh, the radius is, at t equals, the radius is, is 100. So then this is uh, dh dt is negative 2. r is um, 100 dr dt. What is dr dt at three days? Negative five right here, right? So negative five goes in for that. And then the h, you put in um, the height is 50. So this is going to be one third pi times 100 squared, which is 10,000 times negative two, plus two times 100. So two times 50 would make it 100. That would be 100 squared. That's 10,000 minus negative five. So this is, um, yeah, okay, so that is negative 20,000, negative, negative 70,000. So negative 70,000 pi over three, and that would be cubic centimeters per day, okay? If I have any corrections in the arithmetic, I, you know, it's possible I messed up that arithmetic a lot, but um, 